Jurassic World Dominion. Today we are creating this awesome cake to celebrate the release of this very epic movie. Let's get started. The gigant, the gigant, the giant, Gynogatosaurus. What is this? Gigantinosaurus? Gyanotosaurus. Oh man, no bueno. <laughs> Let me Google it. The Gigantosaurus. Gigantosaurus. <laughs> That's what we're making today, you guys. Man, I am running out of time. All of the cakes that I've been doing recently, they just take so much time. So I have to choose, am I gonna make a pride flag cake or am I gonna make a dinosaur cake? And I thought that maybe I could just tell you guys I'm proud of being gay and then make a dinosaur cake. I'm gay, I'm gay all day, every day. But Jurassic World is coming out in theaters on Friday. And so I gotta make this deadline. <laughs> so we're making a dinosaur. I'm excited about this. I think this is gonna be one of the easier cakes that I'm making. I think this is gonna be easier than the loving cake I made. And that's because I bought a toy. So I bought this giant Gynotosaurus so that I could use it as a reference for the head because I'm only gonna be sculpting the head, which makes it so much easier because instead of like looking at pictures, I can see like all the little details that I need to make my cake sculpt as precise as possible. And I was planning on returning it afterwards, the legs and the tail locked into place so I can't take it apart without breaking it. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to return this toy. Kinda stuck, but that's okay. It looks pretty cool. I'm excited about this. Let's get started. So we are starting at my desk. I want to show you a little bit more of the process so that if you are gonna try and make this, you'll be able to see the techniques that I'm using, even though I'm kind of just making this up as I go. But this is what's helped me for the last four cakes. So I'm starting with three different images of my toy. I took one from the side, one from the top, and then one from the front. And I'm only going to be creating the head. Now I isolated the head and put them on a canvas that's the same size as legal paper. And I adjusted the size of each image so that they match. I also made sure to make two sizes. This is the size of my cake when it's covered in icing. And this is a smaller size that's the cake before icing. And I did that with all my images so I can really understand the shape. Now that's all done, let's move on. I printed out all the cake size shapes that I'm gonna need to make my Gignagatosaurus. And I've got a 12 by nine inch cake here that I'm going to use to cut all of my shapes. I think I can get three full layers. After I cut them out, it's time to start stacking our cakes for our Gignagatosaurus. Gignagatosaurus, stupid. So I was able to get two full layers. The third layer is a little small, but I think that's fine. Pretty sure I'm gonna have to carve a lot just because of the way his shape is faced. F face is shaped. So it works out and I get to use most of my cake. I'm gonna level this out and we can start to stack. I'm using my PVC pipe and I've got an acrylic disc here to hold up this piece of styrofoam that I sealed and shaped to be the bottom of my dinosaur. It's gonna be the bottom of my Gynanicosaurus first, but I could also use it for my T-Rex. I could use it for like a crocodile. I'm probably even gonna use it for a dragon. So I'm gonna add some buttercream to hold it down. Um, nobody's gonna eat this cake, otherwise I would put a layer of cardboard in between the styrofoam. I'm gonna add a layer of buttercream. My second layer of cake, and I'm gonna put this a little bit further back because I know that the shape of my cake, I actually don't need that much cake towards the front. Now I've got another layer of buttercream. And my last layer of cake that I put upside down. That way there's no crust. Oh crap. There is crust right there. <laughs> it is stacked. I'm going to be cutting, I think, most of this layer away. But that's fine. It looks good and it's standing. Oh my god. And it feels very stable, sort of. It's a little wobbly. <laughs> so let's carve. So if you guys can tell, I actually just used my image and just shaped the side of my cake first. Now I'm gonna take the next image and just add this here and carve as much as I can on the side to round it out. I'm just keeping in mind that all of the decoration is gonna be with the icing, so I'm creating a basic shape. Oh my god, it's looking so good. It's looking very good. I need a little bit of cake back here, so I'm gonna glue on some of my cake pieces. I really didn't use any of the third layer. 
In fact, I probably only use like a half an inch at most at the front and then the rest of the back is just gone. <laughs> it is time for the crumb coat. And I also have to do like a mini reset cause there's just a bunch of cake crumbs everywhere. So I put our cake in the fridge for a few hours. I let it set up. The buttercream is hard and it's gonna be very easy to work with now for like an hour. <laughs> but adding the next coat of buttercream won't take that long, hopefully. So I've got my dinosaur green buttercream, the same color as the Genetinosaurus, and we're just gonna coat this baby. Just a very generous coating of this Gigantosaurus uh, color buttercream. So I put it in the fridge, I let it set up, and then I added a ton more <laughs> buttercream. Printed out all of the images of the dinosaur with the buttercream on top, and it's a lot bigger than I had expected it to be. I kind of just piled it on. <laughs> uh, it's so big, man. I should have printed a smaller picture. I didn't make enough buttercream. So all the buttercream I made is currently on the cake, which means that I have to shave buttercream off and then reapply that to the areas that need more buttercream because otherwise I'm gonna have to color match and I suck at that. I really do, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> color matching is terrible. I'm just gonna have to be very, very careful when I'm sculpting this. But I am very happy with how well this is going. The shape is there, it's already there. And I have a feeling that having the 3D model is gonna make this really easy. And it's so good, okay. So day one was stacking crumb coats and then like adding my final coat of buttercream. This morning I added a lot more buttercream to the top just so I could get all of the dimensions of like the brow bone right. But it's like one o'clock in the afternoon now and I think I'm done sculpting this cake. The thing that I'm gonna do now is just smooth out my buttercream with my silicone makeup appliers. I really can't believe how fast this sculpt was and that large part is due to the fact that I have this huge toy that really helped me understand the shape of the Gynama chorus. So I was able to get a very accurate sculpt in such a small amount of time. Let's smooth this out and then we can start to add texture and I think I'm gonna be doing Doing that with a piping bag. I kind of did what I did with my Sonic cake. With Sonic, I used a piping bag to pipe out lines to create some fur texture. Here, I created balls of buttercream that were all different sizes to match the scales on my Gilantosaur. So larger balls to create larger scales at the top of his head. And then as I moved towards the eye, I created smaller balls. You also notice that I used six slits to create the eyes. When I'm working with larger characters, I use gumballs, but because he has tiny eyes, six slits were the perfect size. Now to blend all of this together, I did use a paintbrush, which I don't like using, but it was the only way to really blend this. And I did leave a lot of the brush texture because it kind of looked like scales as well. Now my sculpting is done, it's time to add fondants. So I'm using fondant sparingly because I want this to be a primarily buttercream cake. I am gonna use fondant to create the inside of his mouth, a lot of those very sharp small teeth, and some black fondant to create the thin spiky scales at the back of the dinosaur's neck. I'm gonna blend this into the rest of my cake with some black buttercream and then it's time to paint. So I'm gonna give this a realistic paint job but I did take a break to go watch Jurassic World Dominion and I loved it, I loved it. I saw the Rotten Tomato score and it's like 38 right now. I don't know why, it's campy but it's based on a theme park. Do you know what theme parks are? They're very campy. I feel like there's more dinosaur action in this movie than all of the other movies put together. You know, one of my problems with Jurassic World The Lost Kingdom, The Lost World, oh my god, there's so many. <laughs> uh, one of my problems with the Jurassic World The Fallen Kingdom, yep, is that at the beginning of the movie when they're not on the island, you don't really get to see a lot of the dinosaur species interacting with each other the way that you do in all, almost all of the other movies. It's basically just a bunch of different dinosaurs running down the hill, jumping off a cliff. And then all of the interactions with the dinosaurs when they're in the mansion are just like stuck in cages and you focus on one dinosaur when you've got a whole bunch that you could actually work into the movie. But in Dominion, you get to see all of these different dinosaurs interacting with each other. You've got like a pack of raptors. You get to see a herd of like triceratops. Watching those Elvis looking duck dinosaurs running with the horses is kind of stupid, but also like, 
really cool. <laughs> Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom felt like such a small story, but Dominion feels so large in scope. I loved seeing the raptors run through Malta. Brand new sanctuary in Italy. The Edward Scissorhands looking dinosaur. Well, I was not expecting him to be as cool as he was, but oh my gosh. He's like the MVP of the movie. Now I know that he's called the Giganotosaurus. I don't know why I had so much trouble. <laughs> and then it just turned into like something funny to say. Um, he's such a cool addition to the dino cast and I'm really happy that I'm making him. Now let's get back. So this paint job's kind of minimal. I'm just using a little bit of yellow food coloring to create a yellow eye. And then I'm using a paintbrush and a very thin layer of black buttercream to create all of the dino stripes. I'm just mimicking the pattern that's on the toy. So here is our Giganotosaurus. That's how you say it, right? If that's not the name, then I am not gonna try. The Giganotosaurus, it looks so close to the toy, like very close. And I think they changed the toy a little bit from what he actually looks like in the movie, but it looks so cool. Now I was debating on whether or not I was going to add luster dust to this to make it look more realistic, or if I should just leave it alone and just keep it looking like the toy. But I like to make things hard, so I'm going to add a little bit of luster dust, just different types of green, gray, and a little bit of yellow to give this a more realistic look so that it's somewhere in between what you see in the movie and this Hasbro toy. After I finished painting it, my Giganotosaurus was complete. So here it is, our Giganotosaurus. It's looking pretty dope. I think the thing that I'm most impressed with is the amount of time it took to create this cake. With a lot of my realistic cakes, I think I'm done after like four days and then the week after, I'm just still like nitpicking all of the things that I know I sculpted wrong. But after day three of this cake, I knew my sculpt was perfect. I was just adding texture and then at the end of day four, I was done. Adding all of that luster dust made a really big difference. It doesn't look completely realistic or like the dinosaur in the movie, but a hybrid of the movie version and the toy, which is what I was going for. And I'm like, gosh, I hope you guys love this because I totally want to make more of these. It would be so much fun to make the T-Rex, the Indominus Rex, even to make like a Brontosaurus and have to do like a really tall cake. Oh gosh. Please, please. I hope this video does well. I wanna make all of them. This is definitely one of the cakes that makes me wish I went into sculpting and not cake decorating because I'd wanna display this on my shelf but I can't because it would just melt and rot. What do you guys think? Do you like this? Did you like the movie as much as I did? A lot of people had a lot of problems with it, but I just can't get over how spectacular all of the dinosaurs look. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments what dinosaur you'd like to see me make next, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.